Chapter One of Maori of Fiction. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Ipa Gonzalez. Maori of Fiction by Mary Wollstonecraft. Chapter One. Mary, the heroine of this fiction, was the daughter of Edward, who married Eliza a gentle fashionable girl with a kind of indolence in her temper which might be termed negative good nature her virtues indeed were all of that stamp she carefully attended to the shows of things and her opinions while she did set prejudices were such as the generality approve of she was educated with expectation of a large fortune of course became a mere machine the homage of her attendants made a great part of her puerile amusements and she never imagined there were any relative duties for her to fulfil notions of her own consequence by this means were interwoven in her mind and the years of youth spent in acquiring a few superficial accomplishments without leaving any taste for them when she was first introduced into the polite circle she danced with an officer whom she faintly wished to be united to but her father soon after recommending another in a more distinguished rank of life she readily submitted to his will and promised to love, honour, and obey a vicious fool, as in duty bound. While they resided in London, they lived in a usual fashionable style, and seldom saw each other, nor were they much sociable when they rode rural felicity for more than half the year in a delightful country where nature, with lavish hand, had scattered beauties around, for their master, with brute, unconscious gaze, passed them by unobserved and sought amusement in country sports. He hunted in the morning, and after eating an immoderate dinner, generally fell asleep. This seasonable rest enabled him to digest the cumbrous load. He would then visit some of his pretty tenants, and when he compared their ruddy glow of health with his wife's countenance, which even Rouge could not live in, it is not necessary to say which a gourmand would give the preference to. The vulgar dance of spirits were infinitely more agreeable tis fancied in her sickly diary languor her voice was but the shadow of her sound and she had to complete her delicacy so relaxed her nerves that she became man nothing many such thoughts are there in the female world yet she had a good opinion of her own merit truly she said long prayers and sometimes read her week's preparation she dreaded a horrid place vulgarly called hell the regions below but whether hers was a mounting spirit, I cannot pretend to determine, or what sort of plan it would have been proper for her. When she left her material part in this world, let metaphysicians settle, I have nothing to say, her unclothed spirit. As she was sometimes obliged to be alone, or only with a French waiting maid, she sent to the metropolis for all the new publications, and while she was dressing her hair, and she could turn her eyes from the glass, shone over those most delightful substitutes for bodily dissipations, novels. I say bodily, or the animal so, for a national one can find employment in polite circles. The glare of lights, the studied inelegancies of address, and the compliments offered up at the shrine of false beauty, are all equally addressed to the senses. When she could not any longer indulge the caprices of fancy in one way, she tried another, the platonic marriage, Eliza Warwick, and some other interesting tales it perused with eagerness. Nothing could be more natural than the development of the passions. Nor more striking than the views of the human heart, what delicate struggles, and uncommonly pretty turns of thought. The picture that was found in the bramble bush, the new sensitive plant, a tree, which caught the swain by the upper garment, and presented to his ravished eyes a portrait. Fatal image! It planted a thorn, in a till then insensible heart, and sent a new kind of knight errant into the world. But even this was nothing to the catastrophe, and circumstance in which it hung, the hornet settling on a sleeping lover's face. What a heart-rending accident! She planted, in imitation of those susceptible cells, a rose bush, but there was naught a lover to weep in concert with her, when she watered it with her tears. Alas, alas! If my readers would excuse the sportiveness of fancy, and give me credit for genius, I would go on and tell them such tales as would force the sweet tears of sensibility to flow in copious showers, turn beautiful cheeks, 
to the discomposure of rouge, etc., etc. Nay, I would make it so interesting that the fair peruser should beg the hairdresser to settle the curls himself and not to interrupt her. She had besides another resource, two most beautiful dogs who shared her bed and reclined on cushions near her all the day. These she watched with the most assiduous care and bestowed on them the warmest caresses. This fondness for animals was not the kind of natendrismen which makes a person take pleasure in providing for the subsistence and comfort of a living creature. But it proceeded from vanity. It gave her an opportunity of lisping at the prettiest French expressions of ecstatic fondness, in accents that had never been attuned by tenderness. She was chaste, according to the vulgar acceptation of the word, that is, she did not make any factual faux pas. She fared the world, and was indolent, but then, to make amends for this seeming self-denial, she read all the sentimental novels, dwelt in the love scenes, and, had she thought while she read, her mind would have been contaminated, as she accompanied the lovers to the lonely arbors, and would walk with them by the clear light of the moon. She wondered her husband did not stay at home. She was jealous. Why did he not love her, sit by her side, squeeze her hand, and look unutterable things? Gentle reader, I will tell thee, they neither of them felt what they could not utter. I will not pretend to say that they always annex an idea to a word, but they had none of those feelings which are not easily analyzed. End of chapter 1 Recording by Ipa Gonzalez in Cavite, Philippines